This morning, President Biden said something that many people have waited almost 300 days to hear. Brittany Griner is coming home. Russian state media released this video of her boarding a plane and leaving the country. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances, Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones and, uh, and she should have been there all along. This good news is the end of a nine-month nightmare that started when Griner was arrested in a Moscow airport for carrying vape cartridges with small amounts of cannabis oil in her luggage. A few months back, I went to find out why Griner, one of the biggest WNBA stars, was over there in the first place. We traveled to Istanbul where I could talk to other WNBA players who were in a similar spot. And it turns out they earn a fraction of what most professional athletes make. So to close that gap, they have to play year round. And the only way to do that is to head overseas. Here in the US, Griner made a max WNBA salary of $228,000 compared to the million dollars a year she's been making to play for her team in Russia since 2014. Griner's arrest happened just weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine, which made the very complicated task of getting someone out of a Russian jail seem nearly impossible. Early on, the WNBA and Griner's camp worked to stay mostly silent about her case after the State Department said it was worried that public pushback might negatively influence Russia's decision making. But in May, the US officially declared Griner wrongfully detained, and everyone on her side followed suit, bringing as much awareness as possible and putting pressure on the Biden administration to bring her home. Pretty much up until this morning, though, whether Griner would be home anytime soon was extremely up in the air. Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison, had her appeal denied, and only a few weeks ago had been sent off to a Russian penal colony. For Russia, Griner's arrest and how and even if they were willing to free her was never about justice for a minor crime, but turning her into a political pawn. The Russian legal system differs greatly from the US. Most cases never see a jury and are decided solely by a judge. Griner was arrested under broadly written drug laws that have been aggressively used to target journalists and political activists and often carry lengthy sentences. Sergei Davidis led the political prisoner support program at Memorial Human Rights Center in Moscow. Davidis fled at the onset of the war in Ukraine. Can you walk us through what Britney is up against as far as how her case will play out. Российскому судье достаточно гораздо меньших оснований для того, чтобы счесть человека виновным. Защита гораздо более ограничена в возможностях собирать и предоставлять доказательства. Do you believe Britney Griner is being held as a political prisoner? Everything became possible after Putin decided to assault Ukraine. Today, we see a lot of unpredictable things. Usually, somebody has these cartridges. I do not think that they're searching for them in the luggage, especially when it's a high-level sport person. Mm -hmm. They did it intentionally, obviously. So I think there are some political motivation. The story of how Brittany Griner ended up on a plane back home is complex. And the U.S. only pulled it off by making what they called a very painful decision. The White House said Russian negotiators narrowed down any possible prisoner exchange to one option, trading a basketball star with a bogus conviction for smuggling weed for one of the most notorious arms dealers in history. And that would be Victor Boot, a.k.a. the Merchant of Death a nickname he earned by selling weapons that helped prolong some of the bloodiest conflicts in recent history. He's been accused of arming Charles Taylor's brutal regime in Liberia and both sides of the civil war in Angola, and even selling weapons to the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, although he's denied those claims. The U.S. nabbed him in a sting in Thailand in 2008, and Russia's been trying to get him back ever since. He's a big enough deal that the U.S. tried to add another American to the exchange. Paul Whelan was arrested in Russia in 2018 and sentenced to 16 years for spying, charges he and his family dismiss as absurd. The White House said Russian officials wouldn't include Whelan because, they claimed, his charges are more serious. Even if the Griner boot exchange is a lopsided one, it's still a very big deal. Both because the White House said it had a moral imperative to secure Griner's freedom, and because it's remarkable, given all this tension, the US and Russia could agree on anything right now. 
But don't read too much into it just yet. US officials said this deal does not mean they're any closer to a resolution to the grinding, deadly war in Ukraine. And just today, the US increased troop presence in Estonia, right on Russia's doorstep. I'm Michael Learmonth, editor-in-chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.